here from Laid Lots, Harley Davidson, LA area's oldest, largest, and finest Harley Davidson dealership. Today we're doing a test ride and review on the Livewire electric motorcycle. Just kidding, we're not. I wish we were. We're not going anywhere on this bike today. We're just gonna do some uh, shots of it just standing still. Harley Davidson doesn't trust me with the keys at this point, so they, they won't let me ride it. They, they think I'll crash it or something, I don't know. I think I'll just take it and steal it and just go home. But yeah, we're gonna do, do uh, some walk around footage of it. We got the Harley Davidson Motor Company guys here. We're having this training here at our dealership today. They're setting up all the tents back there. Sorry guys, it's not open to the public. This is just for Harley Davidson employees only and uh, some of the media and stuff like that. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna be doing, getting some more information on this bike. I'm super excited for it by the way. Can't wait till it comes out in August. We are taking pre-orders right now, so if you want to be the, one of the first to get this the, the bike, the Livewire, then give us a call, leave us a deposit, and the bikes are coming in August when the 2020 model year is launched. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a walk around on this Livewire here, and it was pretty nice to have the engineer at our dealership for the past couple of days because we were able to pick his brain and get a lot more info in regards to the Livewire. If you guys have seen my videos in the past, some of this information may be a repeat, but I got a lot more clarification on some of the most commonly asked questions about the live wire. So hopefully I can clear up a lot of the confusion and there's a lot of misconceptions surrounding the live wire and really EVs in general, just because they are kind of new and a lot of people don't really understand the technology quite yet. But yeah, let me just kind of walk you guys through and talk to you guys a little bit about the different parts. So you got a monoblock radial mounted Brembo brakes on the front and they are the 300 millimeter diameter rotors. The front headlamp, the headlamp is one of the two things that remain the same since Project Livewire back in 2014 when they had that prototype they were taking around the country. You do have dual disc brakes in the front and you've got kind of like this uh, speed screen cowl in, in the front that's kind of unique to the live wire. I've only got two painted parts on here, that, that speed screen cowl, and then you've got the top cover, which was specifically designed and intentionally designed to look like a gas tank. And really it's just covering up the charging unit. Harley Davidson wanted to retain the classic lines of a gas tank and the motorcycle profile. And so they wanted to keep that, but make it still have like a futuristic appeal. But yeah, Harley didn't want it to make it look like some type of obscure vehicle. They wanted to keep the lines of a, of a classic motorcycle. Here's the port for the charging. So that the second little flap there that I opened up is for the DC fast charge. You don't need to open that up for level one and level two charging. I'm gonna get more into the charging in detail in just a minute. But yeah, here's a little latch there for the charging port. Here's a shot of the TFT uh, electronic screen. So it does have Bluetooth. You Bluetooth your, your phone to the system and then you got like navigation. You can kind of piggyback the navigation off your phone onto the screen and then you have like your audio. Here's a seat for you. So the seat is at two up. You got passenger pegs on there as well. Can't imagine a passenger is gonna be real comfortable on that for a long time, but it is there if you need it. Those, these two cords there are for the DC fast charge. This is a latch here that you pull and it releases the latch to open up the seat here. This is a storage compartment here that allows you to store your level one charging cord. So you can take it with you no matter where you are. So if you ever you know need a charge out on the road or whatever, you can do that. Again, level one charging, it's, it's just like plugging it into your wall and any outlet at your house. 120 volt, takes about 10 hours for a full charge and you can close that up if the level 2 is a 240 and that charges at the same rate I'll, I'll talk about that more in a little bit like I said here's a shot of the rear mono shock this is really high-end stuff this is a premium high-performance Showa BFRC it's a balanced free rear cushion light mono shock and it is fully adjustable you can adjust the rebound dampening and the 
the compression as well with the knobs that I'm showing here. And then with the spanner wrench, you can adjust the preload right there on the shock coil right there. So this is where you adjust the, the preload based on the rider weight. So really high-end stuff. Um, it's more technologically advanced than any other Harley-Davidson shock that's offered on any of their models right now. Here's the Revelation permanent magnet motor. Uh, that's the electric motor there. And you got kind of this little insignia at the bottom of the battery pack. I'll go more into the battery in detail in just a minute. Here's your foot controls here. Go back to the rear wheel. It is a belt drive. You got a 17 inch wheel in the rear and the front wheel is also a 17 inch wheel. 120 millimeter width in the front. You got 180 millimeter width in the back. And just for a point of reference, 180 millimeters is the same width as a touring bike actually. So pretty nice wide profile tire back there. Here's another shot of the mono shock in the rear. Again, those are the, the two cords that go directly into the battery for the DC fast charge, the level three fast charge. Passenger pegs there. Here's another shot of the frame that basically encapsulates the high voltage battery or the RESS, the rechargeable energy storage system. And it's composed of a lot of little lithium ion cells surrounded by the fins cast aluminum housing. Here's a shot of the, the hand controls on the left. So a couple things, high low beam, you have the turn signals, your voice command there. You have your little joystick on the bottom left there to uh, toggle your music and all that stuff. On the bottom right you have the cruise control switch similar to the other bikes. Top left you have the traction control. You can turn the traction control on and off except for if you're in rain mode you cannot turn the traction control off in rain mode. Here's another shot of the display there. On the right hand side you've got your kill switch starter, your emergency flashers, you've got a mode button there. You've got seven ride modes on this bike. Four of them are preset ride modes. I know like one, one is sport, one is rain mode. I'm not sure what the names of the other two modes are, but there are also three programmable ride modes as well where you can kind of program, I guess, the, the power output and the regenerative braking. Uh, you know, how much of that uh, regenerative braking when you let off the throttle do you feel? Like how much drag are you gonna feel on the motor? And uh, you know, when you let off the throttle and you feel that drag that actually regenerates the, the bike. Here's an air scoop on the side. These are functional air scoops. So they do funnel air down and, and cool off the battery there. The heat fins on the, the case, the battery case, are functional as well. So they do help dissipate the, peat, the heat as well. Just the overall aesthetics of the bike are really nice. I'm just really impressed with the overall fit and finish and the quality of the bike. You know, as I've had, I've been anticipating the live wire. You know, I've ridden several other electric motorcycles out there and you know the, the power delivery is is pretty addicting they're real fun to ride but you know one thing about the live wire is just that it just has that fit and finish and quality feel that you know some of the other electric bikes don't have I mean this is by far the most premium all-around bike I've been on and again I haven't ridden this final production unit but I did ride the the prototypes which were quite a bit different so you know I'll do my full reveal and, and ride video when this comes out in August but yeah I can't wait I mean this thing is just it's just a really good all-around electric bike and it's it's the first electric motorcycle uh, put out there by a major motorcycle manufacturer pretty much all the electric motorcycles out there right now are just like startup companies companies or companies that you know there's some companies that have even you know been making these electric bikes for a while and are now out of business and so it's gonna be really nice to have an electric bike in the market that is backed by such an iconic big motorcycle manufacturer like Harley Davidson and all the support that comes with that I mean it just I just feel a lot better about getting a bike that you know that the company is gonna be around and isn't gonna go out of business you know a year or two after you buy the bike just the the huge dealer network that is gonna be behind this bike as well for support and service and parts and everything else so yeah I'm really excited about it one of the things that was said that really stuck with me that one of the Harley Davidson Motor Company employees, it's part of the, the Livewire team said, is that the primary objective of this bike was to be the best all around electric motorcycle on the market. I think they hit it on the head. You know, a lot of people get fixated on one or two statistics, you know, primarily range and range is very important. And the Livewire has a very good range, but 
you know, people get fixated. And I see a lot of comments uh, in person and online that, you know, they, they look at range and they look at the price tag and they're like, oh, okay, well, this doesn't have as good a range and it's a higher price tag than some of the other bikes. But when you consider everything, the range, which the live wire is extremely good, by the way. Charging station, baby. DC. Stage three, yeah. <laughs> You get about 140 miles city, and you get about 90 miles mixed of freeway or highway and city. But when you consider the, the range, the performance of the bike, and you got zero to 60 in three seconds, the suspension on the bike, the aesthetics, the fit and finish, the electronics, the braking, uh, you know, everything considered, the, the mobile con connectivity, I think it would be very hard for anyone to argue that there's a better all around electric motorcycle on the market right now than the live wire. An analogy that I really like to make is, you know, why is it that not everybody goes out there and only buys the cars that have really good fuel economy. The only thing, the only criteria people cared about in buying a car was the miles per gallon. Then everybody would buy, you know, the, the Prius or, you know, the Volt or, or whatever else. But, you know, there's a lot of other things that people want out of a four-wheel vehicle, out of a car. You know, storage space, the aesthetics, seating room, uh, electronics, the Know, the power, the performance, can it tow? You know, there's there's just a lot of different needs uh, by people that have that, that ride and enjoy their vehicles in different ways. It's the same thing with the live wire and in motorcycles. And this kind of can be the same concept can be applied to gas powered motorcycles as well. It's what I always tell people when they come in to buy a bike from me. You know, how are you going to enjoy this bike? What type of riding do you see, see yourself doing? Do you have friends that do overnighters? Are you going to take your wife with you? You know, for those types of people, you know, long distance traveling stuff, I say get the touring bike with the fairing. Do you care about electronics? Well, then get a fairing model, you know, like a Street Glide or a Road Glide that has the new infotainment system. Or, you know, there's the guy that, you know, is in downtown LA that goes around LA that doesn't really get on the freeway too much and they don't do long distance very often. And, you know, those guys, you know, sportsters or soft tails all day long, you know, so it really just depends on the rider, you know, and in a bike like this, if you're a guy that travels a lot, it does four or five hundred miles in a day, then I'd say, yeah, the live wire is not for you. Don't get it. But, you know, if you're a working professional in the city or something like that, like San Francisco or LA, and you don't ride more than 140 miles in a day, then the live wire is going to be better than any gas powered motorcycle out there for you in, in most circumstances, I would think. So yeah, it just really depends on the type of riding you do. Maybe you live by, by a cane or something like that. You know, I grew up in the mouth of uh, Glendora Mountain Road, and so this bike would be awesome to pull out on a Sunday and rip up the canyon roads on it. You know, I'm not going to be doing more than 140 miles. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, it would be perfect for that. Another thing is, is all the Harley Davidson dealerships that are selling the live wires, they're required to get the stage three charging or the level three charging, I should say, which is the DC fast charge. And so you can charge your bike. You're gonna get free charging as a live wire owner at, at any dealership. So you can pull up, charge free, charge your bike in an hour and get you know the full range. And so if you live you know somewhat close to a dealer, go down and, and charge up your bike and you never have to pay for gas or charging or anything like that. If you are in a, a densely populated city area as well, there's charge point stations all over the place. And so there's a lot of different places to charge your motorcycle. I'm gonna give you guys kind of a behind the scenes look. Harley Davidson has their trailer out here that's kind of like their mobile display unit where they're you know, showing off a lot of the details on the live wire. They got some of the parts kind of pulled off so you can kind of see them like in their raw form. And I'm gonna be showing you guys some of the details here. So we'll start off first with the electric motor. This is the Harley Davidson Revelation Permanent Magnet Electric Motor in its raw form, just kind of a standalone there. And this is mounted up underneath the battery compartment. So really low center of gravity. They, they have this, you know, really low on the motorcycle to give it a low center of gravity. And you know, that helps with the handling on the motorcycle as well. I think that's really cool about this motor is it produces 100% of its rated torque instantly when you crack the throttle. So yeah, these things, if you've never ridden or driven an electric vehicle before, Electric vehicles are, they're really, really fun. You know, the acceleration is amazing. You got here, this is a bevel drive and that's actually where the sound comes from. It's like got like a high pitched, like turbine engine sound. And 
yeah, here's the, the main pulley there. But yeah, they, they did a lot of tweaking with the, the main drive there to really get the sound and the sound quality, you know, exactly how they wanted it. Because sound has always been, you know, one of the staples in, in creating a new bike in the Harley Davidson world. Because sound is such a big part and aspect of kind of the overall riding experience on any Harley Davidson they make. So yeah, it's a, it's a really cool sound. Harley Davidson actually hasn't come out officially with the weight yet because it hasn't been, you know, weighed by the governing bodies and they don't want they don't want there to be any discrepancies from when they weigh it and when, you know, the governing bodies weigh it. But personally, I I didn't again, I didn't ride it, but I pushed it around and my my expectation is it's probably going to be somewhere around 500 pounds, give or take 30 pounds, but you know, I, I felt like it was about the same weight as like a street, like a street 750. Here's the paint colors. You've got yellow fuse, orange fuse, and then you've got vivid black as always. And the, the two color finishes are made to be kind of like look to look like an anodized metal. And these are made from a plastic injection mold at the Tomahawk plant in Milwaukee and painted there as well. Same paint and finish and quality and everything as all the other Harley Davidson. So no compromise there at all. So let's talk about the technology just for a second. So you've got the, the TFT color screen display. And you can kind of customize which widgets, as they call them, you want to display, whether that be like your Bluetooth connectivity, your what music, what song is playing, uh, your range that's left. And so you can kind of pick the information that's most important to you that, that displays on, on the actual screen. HD Connect is the cellular connectivity service provided uh, uh, as a partnership through Panasonic. And that's basically how you can you can see the charging status of your bike, you know, where, where the charging level is at. You also get those security alerts on your telephone if your bike is being disturbed. And there's also like a bunch of different data and stuff like how many miles you've been riding and, and things like that. And that's all done through the Harley Davidson app as well. I know a lot of Harley Davidson owners have the app right now, so it's not like a new app or anything like that. So here's the top cover for the charger. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the charging for a second. So like I mentioned before, you can do level one or level two charging. Now they charge at the same rate. And the reason being is that level one and two, you're basically taking an AC current and you're having to convert that current into a DC power, which is what the, the live wire uses. So when you, when you take the level two, like a 240 volt uh, current, and try to convert that, it produces a lot of heat and you need more real estate to have a, a charger to convert that power. Well, there's not enough real estate on this motorcycle to have both that level two charging capability and the level three DC charge as well. And so Harley Davidson made a conscious decision to have just the level three on there. And so, yeah, for that reason, you can hook the bike up to a level two, like a 240 volt, but it's not gonna charge the bike any faster than, than about the 10 hours it's gonna take at a level one as well. But you do have the, the level three, which most electric bikes do not have. And like I said before, that charges the bike 80% in 45, like 40 minutes and 100% in about an hour. That last 20% it takes a lot longer than the rest of it. Here's a, a shot of the raw shock again. That's a kind of a prototype one. The yeah, the Schrader valve on the left hand side that's kind of that's different now but yeah that's kind of the the shock in its prototype stages but yeah if you guys have any, have any more questions about the charging let me know uh hopefully i cleared it up pretty good here's a shot of the frame there it's kind of nice that you know it's modular and it comes off like that so if you ever accidentally drop the bike and damage just part of the frame you don't have to replace the entire you know frame to to fix the the outer frame there we're gonna move over to the battery housing now. So this is a cast aluminum housing here, and it has you know heat fins on it, which are functional, like I've mentioned already. These holes right here are actually where the rear shock mounts up. So this battery housing is a stress member of kind of like the frame of the bike, and so it provides a lot of the rigidity and stiffness on the vehicle, and that's done to uh, basically reduce the weight. You know, like a lot of high-end sport bikes like Ducatis use the engine as a stress member uh, of the, the chassis to reduce weight and, and, and basically get weight savings on, on the frame. And so that's what the live wire has done. And like I've said before, you know, in this uh, rechargeable energy storage system, it's basically composed of a lot of small lithium ion cells. 
and this battery is made by Samsung. And what's cool is this: these batteries, these cells in here have been a proven technology they've used in the automotive world. And it's a big reputable company like Samsung. So it's one more thing that Harley Davidson has done to basically you know, ensure reliability and high quality of this bike. You know, a lot of the electric motorcycles out there just basically gave their manufacturing of their battery to the cheapest bidder. So it's these obscure companies that nobody's ever heard of. But for that reason, you know, I'm sure the cost is higher for Harley Davidson, which is one more reason that kind of justifies the $30,000 price tag on this bike because the battery and, and, a lot, and all the components for that, that matter are just a higher end quality and just higher quality parts basically so here's a kind of a sign uh talking about some of the vehicles the electric vehicles that are coming out as part of harley davidson's electric portfolio that they said they're going to come out with and you know the live wire they have said that they're going to be coming out with accessories in the future so these are just kind of like some carbon fiber and it's not like a wrap or anything these are actual carbon fiber parts you know part of the seat there and like some side covers and stuff now they've got like this uh, speed screen blade, which is like a part that affixes to that little uh, fairing or cowl that wraps around the front headlamp as well. And there's a lot of multi-fit parts on here as well, like uh, grips and like the brake lever, and I'm sure like pegs and stuff. Uh, a lot of that will cross over to some of the other bikes as well. So, you know, in typical Harley Davidson fashion, there will be a lot of parts uh, made for this bike. I'm sure a lot less than like the other bikes, like the Sportsters and Softtails. You will have some customization options. So here's kind of a, a display of some of the key points on the bike. So you've got the co-branded Harley Davidson and Michelin Scorcher tires on here. And again, the Showa rear shock that I've already kind of talked about, the balance free rear cushion light mono shock, fully adjustable. And you know, the thing that's cool is the adjustments are really readily accessible. For you to you know adjust on the fly again you can adjust the preload compression and rebound the aluminum frame is really lightweight as well it's a three-piece frame and the VIN is on the steering head so that allows you to like I already mentioned you know swap out uh, sides of the frame for repairs and for services and things like that without you know affecting the the VIN and let's talk a little bit about the painted parts here and I, I kind of already mentioned that, that the top cover, they deliberately kind of patterned that and styled that after a gasoline fuel tank to kind of give you the familiar lines of a motorcycle. You've got the uh, 4.3 inch TFT touchscreen. It's a LCD image. And I, I wish I could have turned that on for the video guys, but I, I've, you know, I've seen videos of it and it looks pretty dang nice. Again, you can customize the display, hook it up to your phone. Your music and your navigation will play off of the screen. It doesn't have navigation built into the bike. You have to basically use the nav off of your phone, but it will give you like the prompts off the screen and it will then deliver that to like a wireless headset. You've got the LED Daymaker headlamp on here and you know, it looks good. And um, yeah, they say it's, it's approved for global market so you know this light is approved everywhere around the world this bike's not launching everywhere in the world though i know it's only launching in like north america and maybe canada at first but i'm sure they'll be taking it out to other parts of the world again i already talked about the brembo monoblock radial mounted brakes 300 millimeter diameter rotors so exceptional braking power guys i'm sure this thing is just going to stop really really good this bike is made to be ridden hard I mean, this is a very performance driven electric vehicle the acceleration like i mentioned again is zero to 60 in three seconds and then from 60 to 80 miles an hour it's 1.9 seconds so yeah 100 percent of your rated torque instantly when you snap snap the throttle so we're going to go over here to the steering head this is the third piece of the frame this is where the vin is located on the left hand side i think i get a shot of it but yeah it's it's a pretty stout piece that's pretty well protected from Know, drop damage and things like that and here's the front forks once again this is the the Showa the separate function front fork big piston there's your yeah your VIN on the left hand side there or the right hand side if you're sitting on the bike so yeah you have 
your adjustments at the top of the forks here. They call it separate function because you've got preload on one side and you've got rebound and compression on the other side. So they kind of have you know, a little bit different function there. And yeah, this is a really high end front end again. It's inverted front end as well. This right here just talks about you got a 12 volt lithium ion battery that's kind of separate. It's kind of behind where the motor is mounted real low behind the motor. And that basically just powers uh, you know, the vehicle startup and your, all your electronics on the bike, like your screen and all that good stuff. One of the coolest features on this bike, and I kind of saved the best for last, and I don't really have any footage that is applicable for me to splice in here while I talk about this, but the live wire is equipped with an electronic chassis control system. So basically what that utilizes is it has a six axis inertial measurement unit or an IMU. And basically what that does is it senses movement on the bike. It can tell if you put the bike into a lean angle, if you go left or right lean angle, uh, or it can tell if you have front or rear wheel lifts. Like if you do a wheelie, it can sense that. Or if you hit the bre front brakes too hard and you do kind of like one of those stoppy wheelies, it can sense if you have rear wheel lift. And it utilizes that in combination with the ABS sensor technology to give you uh, cornering enhanced ABS, I should say. And also, you know, enhanced, electronically enhanced traction control as well. And it also has another feature what they, they refer to as drag torque slip control system as well. And that's designed to manage rear wheel slip and prevent rear wheel lockup due to the regenerative braking. So basically in, in a nutshell, if you have the regenerative braking set to too high of a setting, and let's say maybe you go over sand or ice or water or whatever, and due to that drag on the motor, due to the regenerative braking, if your wheel is basically loses traction, it will sense that and it will slip your wheel so that you regain friction and traction on the road. And in the ABS cornering, the sensor, the IMU will sense when you put the bike into a turn. So the enhanced ABS will provide a specific level of intervention when the motorcycle is leaned into a turn. And the rear wheel lift mitigation utilizes the ABS sensors and the IMU to manage rear wheel lift during heavy braking. So if you're, if you're really getting on that front brake really hard and you otherwise would, would lift up the, the rear tire, which would severely increase your, your braking distance, you know, the IMU will sense that and then the ABS will kick in and basically make it so your rear wheel comes down. And you know the traction control system is also designed to support the front wheel lift mitigation as well to reduce height and duration of the front wheel lift. So it's basically designed if you roll on the throttle real hard to mitigate you know how much of a wheelie you, we will potentially do. The wheel lift, the front wheel lift is also tied to the rider selected uh, mode. So like if you're in sport mode, then the IMU will let the bike come up more um, then if you were in like more of a conservative riding mode where it's it's going to control the, the power to the rear wheel and it won't let the front end come up as high. And again, you can also have three customizable rider modes as well, which will influence you know, your ability and, and how much intervention will come in from this electronic chassis control while you're doing things. Um, if you are in rain mode, that is the most restrictive mode and in sport is the least restrictive mode as far as front wheel lift mitigation. So I'm sure if you're in rain mode, the bike won't let you uh, bring that front wheel up at all. You know, so it's really probably gonna, you know, tone down the power output to, to your rear wheel. But yeah, pretty cool. So that's about it guys. That's pretty much everything I learned over the two days uh, when the live wire was here and the engineer was here as well. A couple other questions that I had that aren't really answered at this point is I asked about the, the rating on the kilowatt hours on the battery and that's yet to be determined. And kind of the reason why is Harley-Davidson doesn't want to come out with their number and then have the, the official measurement or the governing bodies that measure these things have something different and then have to amend that number. You know, an example of that would be like the, the zero to 60 rating. You know, Harley-Davidson came out with a three and a half second zero to 60, like six or seven months ago. And then that has now been amended to three second zero to 60, just because again, the governing bodies you know, came out and they you know, found it to be lower. Harley Davidson has said to me that they're being very, very conservative in all of their, their stats that they're putting out there just because they want 
people to be able to reproduce the stats that they're that they're giving. There's a lot of electric motorcycle companies right now that are throwing out stats that once people buy the bikes, they're not able to re reproduce those stats, and Harley doesn't want that. So, you know, what, what my plans are in the future when this bike comes out is to take it down and try to get you know one or two other uh, electric motorcycles and you know run them completely dead and you know really just do my own measurements on on the range and everything and just kind of do like some head-to-head -head comparison videos like I've already kind of done with the zero in a way but anyways yeah that's to come appreciate you guys watching if you have any questions uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments below uh, me and Nick will do everything we can to try to get back to you guys and get the answers to your questions and again if you guys are looking for one of these come on down to Laid Laws Harley Davidson and we can put your name on them uh, Harley Davidson has set aside a certain amount of these bikes for pre-orders um, they said there are still some left so if you want one specifically sent to our dealer with your name on it you know come see me thanks a lot guys have a good one bye, -bye.